right everyone now within this lesson we're going to get to grips with another economic model so it's a really simple model to get your uh, head around so there's there's not going to be any problems in terms of the understanding here but it's a very very useful and very powerful one for enabling us to actually uh, identify and categorize the economic growth and development that is taking place in both China and other global economies. So let's take a look. Now, this is called Rostow's stages of growth, and it outlines that growth occurs in identifiable stages. Those identifiable stages I've got highlighted here, and we'll have a look at those in just a second. But you can identify what stage of growth and development a country is by certain characteristics within their economy. Okay, and we'll come on to that in just a moment. But firstly, if we just look at the axes that I've plotted here, where we've got GDP on our y-axis and time on our x-axis, um, we can see that the principle really is that as time goes by, the economies will develop and become wealthier over time. Uh, so if we just take traditional society, for instance, traditional society is going to be based around um, primary goods, farming, agriculture, and that is pretty much it. Okay, there might be some basic development in terms of farming techniques, uh, some basic tools may have been developed, but that really is going to be it. There's very, very few examples of this today. Uh, perhaps if you looked at Amazonian tribes, uh, that might give you a sort of example to consider in, when it comes to this traditional society. Okay, now our next stage is about the preconditions for economic takeoff. Um, now, why might this take place? Well, this might actually take place because, for instance, if there is a, a wealthy abundance of natural resources in a particular area, there might be an increase in investment into uh, that particular country. So, for instance, if there was a, a gold find or uh, something of that sort of nature, there might be a reason to actually want to invest in that country. Now, of course, that would bring income and it would also bring uh, human capital transfers and technological transfers, okay? But it's still going to represent an economy which is based upon primary goods because there I was talking about extraction. It could be for oil as well as another example of extraction. Um, so it's about mining, it's about uh, yeah, primary goods production largely. But nevertheless, there is some investment taking place here and that may mean there is an ability for a manufacturing sector to just start to develop perhaps. And perhaps further to that, there might be some availability for surplus food as the technology actually improves the farming techniques uh, might move on for instance, to say irrigation. Okay, now when economic takeoff actually takes place, what will, what will be uh, really notable here is, is the fact that there will be a process of urbanization underway. Um, people will move to cities where they can be more productive and they can actually earn higher wages. But there will be a massive increase in the manufacturing base here. Now, we mentioned the importance of irrigation at this stage here. That irrigation may mean that there is surplus food available. Um, as a result, that supply-side benefit in the economy will be derived, and therefore that frees up certain workers to actually move into the manufacturing sector. Um, now, most countries begin this process of industrialization by manufacturing very basic, um, basic manufactured goods, for instance, textiles. Uh, and clothing garments, for instance. That's certainly what happened within the UK in our industrialization. Um, okay, so interesting points though are about the increase in urbanization and the increase in the manufacturing sector that's really underway. And the fact that for the first time really, the primary sector is starting to actually fall in terms of employment level. Moving on to uh, the drive towards maturity. Um, now, what's notable about this process is that the manufacturing sector may well begin to diversify towards higher value-added goods. 
So those higher value added goods might be, uh, for instance, digital goods. It might be uh, more sophisticated le electronics and, and those sorts of uh, products which can be sold to other countries. Um, that process of urbanization is likely to continue further and the uh, manufacturing sector is likely to represent a very, very high level of uh, the economic output produced by the uh, country. At the same time, the primary sector uh, will continue to have less and less people employed in those areas. Okay, so this really is where we see China now. Further to that, we can also see there is a middle class which is beginning to grow uh, quite substantially in China now. And that middle class is likely to drive uh, consumption levels further upwards. Therefore, tertiary services may well improve. And further to that, there may be better uh, educational establishments and healthcare providers available. So uh, universities, hospitals. Okay. Um, moving into the fifth stage now, we're, we're moving into um, an area of high mass consumption. Now this, this is where consumption really sort of dominates the economy and therefore tertiary services, retail, are very, very important. Um, consumers buy those high value added goods um, and uh, there's, there's a very, very small proportion of uh, the overall people in the economy that are actually employed in the agricultural sector. Moreover, the manufacturing sector has likely declined. Mm, it could be even relatively significantly. Okay, that doesn't always happen. For instance, if we look at uh, Germany, you know, Germany is renowned for the quality of its manufacturing, uh, and manufacturing employment remains robust there. But in other economies, they've actually begun a process of deindustrialization there. Okay, now. It can also be considered what would also happen beyond this, um, and this is uh, an age beyond high mass consumption. What that will look like, well, we, we don't truly know, but perhaps the, the concept of Uber wanting to have uh, self-driving cars uh, and the principle that they don't actually want people owning their own cars, but simply taking Ubers uh, to get around, that might give us a little insight. Other things like the Amazon Alexa product and that artificial intelligence. So what lies ahead, yeah, will certainly be interesting to see. Okay, let's just consider a few examples of economies that we may have in each of these stages then. Um, so here we might have some very, very poor countries, sub-Saharan African uh, economies, uh, perhaps the likes of uh, Mozambique as an example here, Chad, Niger, uh, and so on. Now, then we might move on to this stage where we might consider an example such as uh, Ethiopia, um, still relatively poor, but nevertheless some industrialization underway. Here we mentioned China, uh, but other economies such as Vietnam could be placed into this category as well. Um, and further to that, we can see those Western economies, those MEDCs in this sector. Okay. Hope that's useful, guys. Thanks ever so much.